we walk into the main room of a cacao cooperative in rural Haiti. The benches along the outside of the room are filled with members of the local peasant council, but in a few moments, there are enough seats for members of our university group. I'd stand next to the leader of the local peasant council, and I translate as he shares his warm greetings and his, and his explanation of the local peasant council's role in the community. And every eye examines us, uh, we, we're the new visitors, but they especially look at me, the foreigner who speaks Haitian Creole. And our two groups, we share ideas, we share questions, and we share hopes of future collaboration. Our university group is three flights, a three-hour bumpy SUV ride, and a walk through a bustling market away from our home university in western New York State. And one short week later, I'm back at my home university. I walk out of my parents' house, the same house that I've been living in since I was five years old, and I walk 180 paces to my morning class. There, my regular seat awaits me, the professor I've known since I was a little kid, and I'm surrounded by familiar faces of people who look like me and talk like me. Now, we can learn a lot by asking the question, where are you from? And for me, I go to school in the same small town where I grew up, and I live in my parents' house. But that only tells half the story. The other half of the story is that I've studied abroad in Vietnam, Francophone Canada, and Haiti. I've studied abroad in four languages, and I've spent three semesters studying abroad, which is almost the same amount of time that I've spent at my home university. I'm in the uncommon situation of both staying at home for college and going away to college. And the shift between the familiar and the strange has defined my college experience. So looking back on a, as a senior on my college experience, I find myself asking the question, why, how does the shift between the familiar and the strange affect what you study and how you study? And more broadly, how can we integrate these shifts in new ways in the context of higher education? I hope to answer these questions and, and address these questions by sharing my experiences in the places where I've studied and exploring how these shifts between the familiar and the strange continue to affect my journey from here on out. So what are the components of a place where you learn or a place where you study? First, we have the physical and cultural context of this classroom and then the individuals and groups that interact within this context and negotiate roles such as the roles of teachers and students. In my experience, sometimes everything was familiar. Sometimes one component was familiar and one component was strange, and sometimes it was all strange. Going to college in my hometown was a pretty familiar experience. I had grown up there and I was living in the same house that I had lived in since I was five years old. I'd known some of the professors from growing up in town, and I'd taken some classes at the university when I was a senior in high school, so I got to know some more professors and students as well. I knew the dance of everyday life in my hometown, and I was comfortable interacting with people in this familiar environment. And because of my familiarity with my hometown and my home university, I was able to take advantage of some great opportunities early in my college career. I took upper level classes and started to work on applications for fellowships and scholarships as an underclassman. But I didn't want to stay in my hometown for all four years of my college experience. I wanted to go new places, study new things, and meet new people. And I wanted to do this by studying abroad. In fact, I'd made the conscious decision to stay at my house, stay in my hometown, so I could study abroad more. And because I wanted to study abroad earlier on, my mentor suggested that I go on a service learning trip to Haiti during spring break of my freshman year. In Haiti, the familiar environment of my hometown was completely flipped upside down. This was my first time traveling outside of developed countries. This was my first immersion in a culture where I was the racial minority. This was my first sustained exposure to an to extreme poverty in my first time visiting a place that had recently experienced violent upheaval. Now, these were all things that I'd never experienced in my hometown and didn't want to experience in my hometown. So to navigate this very strange environment, I had familiar peers 
and professors from my university to help guide me. The professors from my university shared the history of my university's relationship with the local, uh, with the local community, and the returning students on the trips were models for how to create meaningful projects. These familiar aspects helped me find a place in this new, strange dance around me. My role was to follow my interests in foreign language and international education to help address the language barrier so members of our university group could more directly connect with local partners. So coming home from Haiti, I had a new language to study, a new context to study, and a new process for engaging the strange. After some time back at my home university, I spent my first full semester studying abroad in Vietnam. Now again, I was in a very unfamiliar context, but this time I didn't have my familiar peers or mentors from my university to help guide me. I was in this big mix of culture and I didn't really know where I fit in. I had to start from the beginning, create my own narrative and find new peers and mentors. And I found some of my closest mentors in the local swing group that was made up of both foreigners and locals. Now, I had been swing dancing for a few years, but in Vietnam, I saw how swing dance could be more than just an engaging hobby. It could be a vehicle for intercultural exchange. Swing facilitated interactions and relationships with locals and other internationals that allowed me to engage in local culture more deeply. I had heard of this metaphor of dancing to the rhythm of a new culture, but in Vietnam, I was actually dancing, and this dancing was facilitating intercultural friendships. My experience swing dancing also led me to a more sophisticated paradigm, and I realized that dance could be a fruitful and useful metaphor for understanding this encounter between the familiar and the strange. So when I walk into a new dance, I first survey the dance floor, listen to the music, and see how the dancers are reacting to this music. And then I have to find someone new to dance with. Do you remember the last time that you walked out on a dance floor or had to dance with someone new? It can be a little awkward. And dancing with somebody new takes a certain openness, a certain attentiveness, and a certain readiness to be uncomfortable. So after this first connect, physical connection with my partner, we take small, simple steps. We are very attentive to the length of each other's steps and the bounce in each other's steps. And slowly, we, uh, we listen to the par our, the, our partner's movement and our partner's reaction to um, our movements. And slowly, our movements expand. We listen to the music, we react to the music a little bit more and our, our movements get a little bit louder. We dance a little bit louder, but we're always attentive to the subtle cues that we might give one another. We also look out for each other on the dance floor. We help to keep each other's balance and make sure we don't bump into each other um, with other dancers. So in this meeting of the strange and the familiar, we negotiate roles, we make suggestions, we have new ideas, and we dance a dance that has never been danced before. During my time in Vietnam, I found this new connection with two familiar interests, a new way of engaging unfamiliar people in unfamiliar places, and a new way of thinking about inter intercultural communication. My second semester studying abroad, I studied in Francophone Canada. And a lot of people from my hometown think of Canada as almost culturally equivalent to the United States. And aside from this language difference, the small, rural, uh, residential university, it seemed a lot like my hometown. The professors were easy to get to know, and the cold winter was all too familiar. But I soon saw, soon saw complexities and strangeness in this seemingly familiar environment. In terms of the everyday dance at the university, there were two clear groups. The Canadian domestic students, who were mostly bilingual and fairly culturally similar to me, and the international students who were mostly from Francophone Africa and who made about, up about one-third of the student population. I soon saw further separation within these groups along the lines of race, place of origin, what variety of French that they spoke, religion, and the language that they spoke in addition to French. These divisions left many of the groups and individuals on the outside of the dance floor, and even though some of these divisions might be hard to overcome, 
Some of the groups were just not used to inviting others into their dance or learning a new dance. I felt like a partial member of both of these larger groups, and I was ready to dance with new people, so I was able to explore these complexities within these groups and watch the dance between them. Sometimes I even took the lead and became an informal connection that brought members of these groups together. Leaving Canada, I had learned how to reach out to unfamiliar people in a familiar context. I spent my final semester studying abroad in Haiti, back at the same site where I had spent uh, a week a few years before. And this was my most immersive experience. This time I didn't have my fellow peers and professors from my university, and I was also the only foreigner in town for most of my time. But all of my experiences had prepared me. I had studied Haitian Creole and French. My previous trip to Haiti had oriented me to the site and the history of my college's relationship to the local, to the local community. In Vietnam, I had learned how to navigate a new culture on my own. And in Canada, I had navigated and connected two very different groups in, an in a familiar environment. So throughout my stay, I was an ambassador for my university, but I first needed to get to know the local culture. So I looked out on this new dance floor, listened to the music, got to know my new partners, and slowly started to participate in this new dance. And the unfamiliar slowly became more and more familiar. I improved my Haitian Creole, I, I made lasting relationships, and I found my deeper role in the larger partnership. I also documented my experience so fellow students and the future, future students could use, use me as a model for finding uh, their role in the larger partnership. When I returned to Haiti this spring break to assist the service learning program, I, found I was able to facilitate the dance between two communities that I knew deeply. I did this through language by translating for groups and individuals, including our meeting with the local peasant council. I also connected familiar, familiar um, I also connected partners with similar interests and expertise. And once they overcame the awkwardness of first contact, our new partnerships and friendships grew beyond our expectations. Coming home from Haiti, I had learned how to be a formal bridge between the commu two communities that I knew well. Now after three semesters studying abroad, I returned to my home university, to my house, and to my hometown. Now it seemed that not much had changed, but I saw this very familiar environment with new eyes. The familiar dance now seemed a little strange. It seemed strange to be surrounded by people who looked like me and talked like me. I also saw unfamiliar elements and complexities in the dance that I hadn't noticed before my travels. I noticed international students that were on the outside of the dance floor not participating in the familiar dance. So this semester, I've been trying to welcome unfamiliar partners into the dance that I know well. If I would have stayed all four years at my home university, I would have missed the opportunity to apply my interests in an unfamiliar context, to be a foreigner in a country where I didn't speak the language, and to see how for other forms of communication like dance can help bridge cultural boundaries. But I also would have missed the opportunity to see parts of my college that were still strange to me. So what can we as students and colleges do to integrate this dance between the familiar and the strange into the undergraduate experience? The first step is to seek out the strange. Students can seek out the strange by dancing in a new place, dancing to a new music, dancing with new partners, or learning a whole new dance. Colleges can do the same by seeking new partnerships and giving students the tools to familiarize themselves with new parts of a strange dance. But we don't necessarily need to go far away to seek the strange. In places as familiar as our hometowns, there are new places, people, and dances if we choose to seek them out. As students in colleges, we need to reach out to those who are strangers to the dance that is so familiar to us. Now, I love to swing dance, and I love welcoming people from diverse cultures into the dance. New dances await us. Salsa, bangra, ballet, troika, tango, yonkadi, and swing, and many more. So let's get out on the dance floor. Thank you. <laughs>